Would you open, please, your scriptures to the 28th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew? You'll find a copy of Holy Scriptures in the pew rack in front of you or underneath you. The 28th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew is found in the New Testament, page 29, in your pew edition, page 29. One, two, three. There are quite a few numbers in Holy Scripture. They're rather prolific. And one of the most common numbers of them all is the number three. We worship the triune God. One God, three persons. Not three gods. One God, three persons. The Bible tells us that Noah had three sons. That Daniel prayed three times a day. The Bible tells us that Satan tempted our Lord three times. And Jesus responded, it is written, it is written, it is written. The Bible tells us that Peter denied the Lord three times. That Mary went to visit Elizabeth and stayed for three months. That Paul went to Ephesus and he preached boldly for three months. That Paul cried out for a healing of the thorn in the flesh three times. The Bible tells us that Paul experienced three shipwrecks. The Bible tells us that Moses' mother hid him for three months. On and on and on it goes. This, this number three just keeps popping up in the Bible. And also on a practical way, that number three that number three comes up, doesn't it? I remember when I was a boy, when I wasn't exactly following the instructions of my parents, they would start the count. Perhaps you experienced it yourself. There was a cadence to it. They would count one, two, and three. I knew when they had started the count. They would say it calmly, they would say it quietly, but they would start the count. I never did a thing on one. <laughs> never. Didn't have to. Because I knew I had two. But when you get to two, that's when you start to kick in the decision making. Will I continue in my present course and once again learn the lesson that I never win this? Will I continue in the present course or will I allow them to go to three? Because if I allowed them to go to three, well, I would lose the toy or I would lose the privilege. One, no action. Two, starting to think. Because when my parents would get to three, things changed. At three. Which, well, like the couple who had planned the trip, they had read all of the brochures, they had gone online and studied it, and they had learned about this, this rock formation that they could climb. And at a certain part of the rock formation was a ledge. And they could walk out on the ledge and then they could jump into the wonderful tropical waters below. They were so excited for this. When they arrived they realized that the ledge was a little bit higher than they had anticipated but they they had spent an awful lot of money here. So they climbed up, they went on the ledge, they were holding hands, they looked at each other and they went one, two, and on three, they leapt and landed in the waters below. Or the little girl, where the family leads her into the family room. 
They've all chipped in for a magnificent gift. And they tell her to close her eyes. But to open them on the count of three. And the family, as she comes into the family room with her eyes closed, the family goes, one, two, and then three. Her eyes open. When you get to three, when you get to three, things change. That first Easter morn, there was despair in the beginning. Look at verse 1 with me, please. Chapter 28. The scripture says, After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. The the other Mary is the mother of James and Joseph. She's the, the wife of Clopas. When they go they're not expecting an empty tomb. They're not expecting a resurrected Christ. They're expecting the worst because the worst has happened. Can we see the resemblance sometimes in our own lives when things look bleak and we can anticipate the worst? Luke 24 tells us that they took spices that they had prepared. John the 20th chapter tells us, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. That first Easter morn, it started with despair, didn't it? It's a far cry, right? It's a far cry from the triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Matthew, the 21st chapter, records the crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. It was a far cry on that first Easter morn from the the feeding of the 5,000. Remember how Jesus took the little boy's meager sack lunch and multiplied that sack lunch and fed 5,000 so that they were so full they could not eat one more bit. There was leftovers and they loved it. They were enamored by this. They loved what Jesus had done for them. And the scripture says they wanted to make him king. That first Easter morn, that despair, it was a far cry from the hushed wonder of the shepherds after receiving the angelic message. They behold the baby. The silence on that silent night holy night it's silent that first Easter morn only dispersed by the sobs but when Jesus on the cross when Jesus on the cross said it is finished when he bowed his head And when he died, as one author puts it, heaven just started to count. So often Jesus would come with the passion predictions. In Matthew, the 16th chapter, It says, from that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. In Matthew, the 17th chapter, it says, as they were gathering in Galilee, Jesus said to them, the Son of Man is going to be betrayed into human hands and they will kill him and on the third day he will be raised. 
In Mark, the 10th chapter, Jesus said of himself, they will mock him and spit upon him and flog him and kill him. And after three days, he will rise again. In Luke, the 18th chapter, Jesus said of himself, on the third day he will rise again. Why, even the chief priests and the Pharisees, they turn to Pilate and they say, Sir, we remember what that imposter said while he was still alive. After three days, I will rise again. And when Jesus said, it is finished on the cross, when he bowed his head, God started to count. Friday. Matthew 27, verse 57. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. He then rolled a great stone in the door of the tomb and went away. One. Saturday comes, the Sabbath. In ancient day, the rabbis would have two strings. One was a light string and one was a a dark string. And they would hold up those two strings as the sun was setting. And when the rabbi was unable to distinguish the light string from the dark string, they would declare then that the Sabbath had begun. They would reverse the procedure to declare that the Sabbath was over. And so the rabbi would have held up the strings Two. Matthew 28 verse 1 says after the Sabbath as the first day of the week was dawning three and when God got to three Things changed. Verse 2 tells us, And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know that you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He's not here, for he's been raised as he said. Come see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. When Jesus said on the cross, it is finished. When Jesus bowed his head. When Jesus died. When all was lost. And darkness filled the land. God started to count. And when he got to three. Things changed. You see, we should have been counted out. We were down for the count because of our sin. 
all of our words and all of our deeds and all of our thoughts and all that we've done and all that we've left undone. He should have counted us out, but instead of counting us out, he started to count. He started to count to three. And that empty tomb of our Lord, the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ, is the guarantee, it is the validation that the shedding of the Savior's blood on the cross for the sin of the world was accepted. When Jesus died on the cross, he took your sin and he took my sin upon himself. And when he was raised from the dead, death was overcome. It is God's way of saying the sacrifice is accepted. That's why we sing, I know that my Redeemer lives. What comfort this sweet sentence gives. He lives, he lives who once was dead. He lives my ever-living head. That's why we sing, the strife is o'er, the battle done. Now is the victory's triumph won. Now be the song of praise begun. Alleluia. That's why we sing, thine is the glory, risen conquering sun. Endless is the victory, now or death has won. Your sins are forgiven. You have been washed clean in the waters of baptism. God has taken that word of victory and put it with the tangible and has washed you in it. God has called you his own. You are God's child. God has made his decision about you. And he holds that decision and he holds you in his hand for all of eternity. And the church on earth and the church in heaven sing, worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. And until that day, until that day when we join the heavenly choir, God holds all of our days, all of them. And as we walk this side of heaven, as we walk on this side of heaven with those days that we count our problems Trust in the one that counted to three. When we walk in these days, this side of heaven, and we count our challenges and we count our obstacles, trust in the one that counted to three. When we go through those bleak times, when we go through those days when we're just expecting the worst, trust in the one who counted to three. Because when he got to three, when he got to three, things changed. And it was Sunday. It was Sunday. It was Sunday. Trust him. Trust him. Trust him. Alleluia. Alleluia. Hallelujah.